in a world where gaming conventions give us the news. Two companies run their own cons and gave us news that not everybody is excited about. Blizzard has held BlizzCon since 2005, taking off only two years since. It has grown from 8,000 attended to an estimated 40,000 in 2018. It covers all Blizzard games and has now even taken a major role in the esports events surrounding some of these titles. Square Enix held FanFest in 2006, 7, and 8 for Final Fantasy XI, but we are now looking at the ones held for Final Fantasy XIV, held in 2014, 16, and 18, that look to be a pattern of every other year timed with the announcements of the future expansions moving forward. With the number of attendees being held private, it is held in three locations to support its North American, European, and Japanese fan bases separately, but we could estimate that 40,000 would be a reasonable cap to be expected worldwide, honestly at best. But this year both companies took risks, so it is time for Versus. In the red corner, looking at the 22nd birthday this December, weighing at around 50 million copies sold as a series, the eighth title in this series, and the first into mobile games, Diablo Immortal. And in the blue corner, also December birthday and looking at turning 26, first appearing in Final Fantasy V, then showing their face countless times, both as playable characters and as lore references across Final Fantasy games, inspiring other classes like the Gun Mage to have abilities that steal skills from their enemies, now acting as the first limited job in Final Fantasy XIV Online, Blue Mage. Now before we decide which one of these loses the fight, as the worst announcement done this year at a developer conference, let's dig a little deeper into who these two are. Diablo Immortal is looking like a reskin from a third-party company known for mobile games and has a reputation that might lead us to believe this game will end up being ruined by monetization. It plays fine for a phone game, but it was announced at BlizzCon as the closing act of the opening ceremony. Due to technical issues on one of the stages, this may not have been intended, but unfortunately in 2018, perception is often reality, and the court of public opinion has labeled it the star of the show in many parts of the internet, not in a good way. It could be a play to introduce a new fan base to the aging series as it only feels like we get a real title for this game once a decade, but Blizzard really lacks a serious presence in the mobile market beyond Hearthstone. It could also be a licensing deal that is little more than a cash grab since the amount of resources Blizzard is giving from their actual development teams appears to be little to none. If it is a cash grab, supporters of Blizzard offer that this is what will give them the money to continue fueling passion projects and even have the flexibility to cancel ones like Project Titan if they aren't up to Blizzard standards. Critics of Blizzard say this instead only fuels their greed for cash. Since they've gotten into bed with Activision, they are just greedy, greedy cash cows. With a lack of clarity in the announcement, if there would ever be a Diablo 4, if another Diablo 3 expansion is in the works at all, supporters of the series were left with an announcement that didn't seem to be geared at them, being touted at perhaps the most diehard Blizzard audience available all year long. Why was this not done when the game was ready since we don't have a firm release date? Why was this not done literally anywhere but BlizzCon? Why was this really the last announcement on stage. And why in a Q&A did they answer somewhat frustrated audience members with a tone-deaf answers to will we see anything like this on PC with don't you have phones? Now on to our older opponent. With a longer reach of dozens of appearances, Blue Mage is well documented in its abilities and lore. Final Fantasy XIV is centered on four-man and eight-man parties with the ratio typically being one tank, one healer, and two DPS. Jobs fall into only one of these three roles and gain abilities as they level up to a job cap set during each expansion where they can then party up with each other for in-game content. Blue Mage promises to break this mold in every way. It can't hit cap on launch. It can't party with strangers. It can't get its abilities by leveling, but instead gets them from quests and more commonly expected by seeing enemies cast them, then killing that enemy for a rare chance at gaining the ability. It will have 49 of these abilities available during its first 50 levels, and we don't know what they are or what mobs drop them beyond the three shown at the convention. It will have altered experience gains to make up for the lack of access to many forms of the traditional leveling content, and with 24 of the skills being active at any one time, could have one of the hardest to define optimal playstyles yet seen in this community. It was announced at the closing segments quite intentionally and quite dramatically, though leaks already had us guessing we would see some form of Blue Mage announcement this year. This was done for a worldwide audience at their first of three events, the first time they've announced a class at one, for the launch of the next expansion where they went into a ton of detail on the Day 2 announcements. Day 2's panel was not behind a paywall for virtual attendees like Blizzard, so speculation around this has been around only the parts intentionally kept hidden like how long will it take to level, and how rare are these abilities that we're learning from enemies. This on the other hand has allowed the community to be much more specific in their concerns, like why is this not being given to us already with the ability to hit the level cap? 
how can I level this when there are active penalties in this game for pairing an open world content with players not the same level as me, and it levels at a different pace to anybody who may have a complimentary job at my level that would be willing to help me along my path to killing all the things for all the knowledge. How can this even be balanced with other classes? What is even the point if I can't go into current in-game uses until you finally release the ability for this to level to cap? Now that you have met them, let's compare who did it worse in this week's verses. First, who gave us more of the deets? Diablo Immortal had a playable demo on the floor for all 40,000 attendees at the con, but gave us little to no real true insight on how this game was being developed or monetized by a company we don't trust with a game franchise that we love. Blue Mage, on the other hand, had little gameplay and no demo, but had a whole section of their Day 2 explanations to give us slide after slide of how this would be implemented and what we can expect, a little bit towards even when we can expect the timing of getting to cap. This has to go to Blue Mage for distributing worldwide palatable information that can minimize and even counter speculation. Second, who risked less damage to the direct player base? Diablo is having a mobile game company use their content to build a game on top of an already functional game from the mobile company, with little use of Blizzard team resources that could be working towards the next mainline Diablo content that they have yet to announce. Blue Mage is taking what looks like a major role in shaping what you can do besides getting better gear the next expansion. It will most likely define the open world player base and is being put in leading up to the expansion, which risks burning out the very lifeblood players of the franchise. Diablo is by far less likely to do less damage to the franchise, and therefore Blizzard takes this over square. I cannot find a single Diablo person who has said, while they may be mad about Diablo Immortal, would not buy Diablo 4 if it was announced today. I have not had any trouble finding Square players who say this may be the reason they unsubscribe from 14. Third round is going to have to center on ingenuity. Who really took the risk here and who is really set to blow our minds the most? A reskin of a game in an established market that Blizzard is not a part of. This is only weird because Blizzard blew us away with the success of Overwatch. They knocked Hearthstone out of the park and are now recognized among the other card game franchises by players. We know that they can enter a market with a splash and have defined huge, major aspects of markets doing so. WoW was far from being the first MMO, but has been a huge definer of that space for a very long time. Immortal has not only not yet shown us any way that it is being inventive in the mobile ma market space, but is shown to be almost a step backward for the franchise, which is only weird because they just came out on the Nintendo Switch and they should have just let that stand as their somewhat mobile announcement and only Diablo announcement of the day. Best case, this is behind the scenes a way at looking into going cross-platform long term and really understanding the technical things that would stop them from making D4 compete with games like Fortnite in being truly unrestricted in the term cross-platform moving forward. Blue Mage is not new, it is even being implemented in what may be the truest and most plain interpretation of a class into 14 yet. That being said, this totally opens the door to classes like Puppet Master, who have not yet been able to make it to the game due to the lack of ability to fit into the required mold for the balance of a class into the battle system that 14 relies on. Now, neither company really invented a wheel in entirety here, but at least 14 is somewhat with this announcement looking at a way that they can make changes to their battle system. Now, yes, it is compartmentalized, so if it fails, we can just leave Blue Mage to die and never try a limited class again. But if it is successful, it could drastically improve the options for gameplay development within this game. Maybe D4 shows us that Immortal was the tool we needed to get where we're going, but as of now, we have to call this exchange in Blue Mage's favor until we know more. Fourth round is time to talk about timing. Diablo Immortal announced this at the wrong time and very much in the wrong way. They then doubled down by handling the community's questions at the event poorly. Admittedly, the community's questions such as, is this a late April Fool's joke, referring to an actual April Fool's joke done by Blizzard, were a bit more pointed than they should have been. But the team on stage should have been the adults in the room and had the maturity to put this to bed in a better way than what appeared to often be mocking the questions. Even if we assume the timing of the announcement and where it took place at BlizzCon was meant to be made better and play a smaller role, but didn't due to technical difficulties shining more light on it than intended, 
Why announce something at all about when you don't have a launch date and you have much stronger announcements that you can just fall back on for your classic players of your games? Blue Mage was announced right up against when we can get hands on it. It is also being dropped during the slowest time in these games as we lead up to an expansion and was accompanied by confirmation that we are getting everything we expected from 5.0 Shadowbringers and more. Now this did come along one other controversial announcement about some server migration that is happening with the addition of more data centers, but that is only affecting the players who really take advantage of cross-world play and is going to affect, you know, some of the wait times, especially on the European servers where we move from one data center to two, and DPS play times are known for being exceedingly long within the underused parts of in-game content such as the daily roulette. Both companies created smaller messes at these conferences, and both will be benefited by the content actually being in our hands and time being passed since the announcements were made. But this one has to go to Blue Mage, being so much closer to a confirmed and defined launch date, and being announced to the actual people who have been asking for this, versus Blizzard making an announcement to a room that never asked for this, makes this a clear decision in this round. Fifth round is where we get to finally talk about the reception by the core audiences. Now both audiences had moaning and groaning in the room, but when I listened in this round for which game had some voice of excitement at all, Blue Mage is the only one I can find. The best quotes I can get from real players, including myself who was at the event and got hands on the Diablo Immortal demo, was that hey, this demo's not actually horrible. Not one person have I found holding their breath for the launch day of Immortal, yet 4.5 may turn out to be the most anticipated final patch of a Final Fantasy XIV game yet. Diablo is falling behind in the rounds and we need to call this fight! Blue Mage, yes you are controversial, and yes, open world level sync and other aspects of your grindiness may prove to hurt the reception you get when we finally get to play. But compared to Diablo Immortal, congratulations on not being the worst announcement at a game developer's own conference in 2018. Thank you guys so much for watching. I look forward to the comments and the conversation down in the section below. Please try to keep it somewhat respectful of each other. I appreciate each and every one of you. This has been Chris with work to game and I'll see you next time. Oh, uh, excuse me. Um, what's up, Workforce? Chuck here, telling you, you should totally like, favorite, subscribe, share, dance, raise your hands, in the air. I'm off camera. I'm off front. I'm new at this. I'm, hey, hey, listen. You, yes. You haven't hit that subscribe button. You totally should. I recommend it. Chuck approved. Anyway, also, thanks to all the Patreons. You're in the corners. Whoa!